Hi, my name is Nicholas Burton and I play Thomas Sharp, aka Sharpie in Barons. When my agents first sent me the project, I vibed with Sharpie straight away. Um, and when I read the audition scenes, there were clearly these different shades to him. You know, he was this loose, lovable film nerd who also had this strong strength and moral compass. Um, and the fact that it was 70s was also very exciting. You know, my dad's been playing me 70s music and telling me stories from that time ever since I was a young kid. So to be part of a, a project in that era was, yeah, it was, it was exciting. When I first read the scripts, I remember seeing the potential for it to hit such a wide demographic. Like I could picture my best mate who's a surfer digging it, but also my parents who would have grown up with people like this and in this time and relate to a lot of the themes and the universal themes that are explored in the series. And the writers have just done such a good job at creating an intimate, succinct world. You know, you feel like you're part of the community when you're reading the scripts and hopefully when the audience watch it. Barons to me, how I would describe Barons is a bunch of ambitious young guns in 70s Australia who all set out to create their own business in order to continue to live this simple life of surf, sex, drugs and rock and roll. But when you bring rival businesses into a small community that's meant to lead with peace and love, relationships will be tested and things are bound to get very messy very fast. Sharpie is a surf cinematographer and a filmmaker. He adventures around the world capturing not only the best surf breaks but also life's more candid moments. So audiences that watch his films can escape and diversify their mind per se. He wakes up every morning with the motto carpe diem. So whether it's catching a last minute flight to Thailand or tripping on some fresh mushies, you can always count on Sharpie to say yes. He leads with trust and loyalty. Um, so when that's broken, you'll see a side of Sharpie that you probably wouldn't expect. At the start of the series, Sharpie is very eager to start cutting together his film. He's been collecting footage for the last two years in Bali and other places around the globe. So for him, Bare Feet Factory is a place for him to just get on the moviola and start seeing his vision come to life. Also, it would be rude not to do a little bit of partying with old friends before then. I'd say the driving force that motivates Sharpie throughout the series is his film. You know, he wants to create a film that feels authentic and real to surfers, but also shines a light on the alternative lifestyle that they're living. He wants audiences to see the pure freedom that comes with living the simple life within nature, uh, adventuring, living day by day and not being caught in the, the nine to five rigid constructs that he sees around him. I'd say Sharpie's uh, driving force starts to shift as he and Margot's relationship develops. It becomes about making sure that they're continuing to grow. Um, Sharpie knows that Margot is a free spirit and likes to also go where the wind takes her. So for him, it's this balancing act of not scaring her away by showing too much commitment, but also having her know that he's falling in love with her. Um, so yeah, it's quite the predicament that he finds himself in. I've loved seeing the characters on this roller coaster that they can't seem to get off, you know? You'll be smoking a joint with a character, having a laugh in one scene, and then 30 minutes later, you could be getting into a punch on outside of the barn, you know? The, the stakes are so high in this world. And when you bring business into a sleepy surf town, relationships are put on, under pressure. And that's when you see all these characters go back to their basic animalistic instincts. So it's really interesting seeing the light and shade in all the characters and 
all the peaks and troughs that they go through. I think the interesting thing about Sharpie and playing Sharpie is that he's almost the silent observer of the story. You know, he, he's watching everything from afar and through the lens and it almost gives him the opportunity to see details in character, character and characters' relationships that they don't even see themselves. You know, he studies them and that gives him knowledge and he almost knows this town better than anyone because he sees the, the bullshit. <laughs> um, I probably can't say that part. You can say oh, cool, yeah. yeah. Um, the intriguing thing to explore with Sharpie has been what is his emotional switch? At his core, he is this free spirit who forges mushrooms for his mates, follows the local Indonesians on whatever walking trail they want him on. But if you take advantage of his generosity, he will step up. You know, he's got a big heart, but he's also got a backbone and he's got guts. So it's been interesting playing around with a great challenge to see at what point do raw human emotions take over Sharpie's ability to uh, stick to his moral compass? The script and story made it so easy to bond because of the content, but also in, in block one, we were shooting these party scenes around a campfire, drinking fake beer, just having a laugh for hours and hours, getting to know each other, exchanging stories, and it really just felt like a family straight away. I know that's everyone says that, but especially in the circumstances of us filming, we all really leaned on each other as actors and also as people. And the best thing about this cast is everyone is just loose and ready to play. And I think you need that when you're doing something based in the 70s because that's the time. Uh, so nothing ever feels too rigid. And yeah, I really, it's been a dream. Yeah, the research into the 70s was fantastic, especially looking at surf culture in the 70s. Um, I think back then, it was so much easier to just go off the grid. It was less taboo. You know, I just read these stories of surfers and even filmmakers who would live in a hut, live on their own vegetation that they're growing, surf, trip, party, repeat. And it just seemed like their souls were so fulfilled. Uh, and even though I'm sure there are a lot of people doing that now, it just, it felt like more of a lifestyle back then that was accepted. And I think that is exactly what Sharpie's doing. He's going wherever the wind takes him. Um, and whether that's staying in Wagonga for a little while and living with the crew or flying to Indonesia and living with the locals for two months, he just lives day by day and will not ever get into a rigid way of life. It's also been, it was also amazing to research the filmmaking and the surf filmmaking in 70s Australia. Watching Albert Falzon's films like Morning of the Earth and Crystal Voyager, films that I would have never known about or watched if it wasn't for this project. And I'm just so grateful to to have seen those films and get a view into a whole other world. And it really helped with building character. So that's been great. Well, don't tell anyone else, especially not Ben O'Toole, but I think I have the best costume out of all the males. I'm just gonna say it. Um, yeah, costume really helped. I mean, when I first put this stuff on, I just felt this, I just felt the, the gravitas of Sharpie coming through and it made me think differently about how he sees himself and how everyone else sees him. And you can tell in the costume there's almost just, I don't know, it demands respect for some reason. You, everyone else is wearing like board shorts and chilling and then Sharpie comes in in his jeans and his boots and he's like, here I am, you know. So costume really helped and it was really interesting uh, researching. I remember researching a few filmmakers and seeing what they were wearing and then I went in for my costume fitting and it was pretty much the exact same jacket that the costume department had sorted. So 
yeah, that was, that was crazy. Uh, and in terms of the production design and the sets and the music, it's so easy to get lost in, in this world. When we're all in costume, it really feels like we are living in the 70s. Actually, I, I had my own playlist and then Ben O'Toole sent me his playlist with Steely Dan and all of these amazing surf, psychedelic rock artists. But also Babe Rainbow, who are a recent band, they kind of tap into that world. So it's cool to, to blend the years and the styles, um, but it all feels very barren. Yeah. Barron's is sexy, it's sharp, and it's unexpected. I hope people remember that trust and loyalty is everything. And when you forget that or you break that, it can be a very slippery slope. I think the dream for Sharpies in the 80s is is for him to have found success and possibly be dealing with the moral battle of all of the beauties of success. And in the 80s, the drugs, the money, the, the women maybe. But wait a second, Sharpie is this guy who's connected with nature, who's all about simple living. So exploring that juxt juxtaposition and seeing where he falls, you know, because that could be confusing and really, really fun.